off. You, you get what? Yes, you'll get pulled off. <laughs> pulled off in the woods. That's why we ride, no? Would you like to share any of those songs? No, I'm sorry. I had no, to sign no, a disclosure good. thing. Treat it mm-hmm. with nanos. <laughs> Nano particles. Yes. <laughs> Super slippies, they were. Hi, Single Track listeners. This is Mark here. You join us for our second podcast. Second podcast of Generation 2. I'm of- Generation 2. Yeah, of the podcast. Yes, because <laughs> if you listened last week, you'd, you'd, you'd heard me talk about how we, we did do a whole bunch of podcasts, God, about over 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, if any of you've got any of those recordings, because we can't find them, then uh, do let us know. Anyway, I'm joined here today with, uh, with Andy. Hello. This is Andy, and Andy's been on holiday recently. Where have you been? I went to Andorra on holiday. It's nothing to do with work, but everyone thought I was there for work because all my friends are in the bike industry. So that's all I did. I spent days at Forestal, days at Comensal, and days at Unique on my days off on holiday. So you'd be able to tell us about all sorts of exciting things that those guys are doing, wouldn't you? No. No, no? not now, no. I, there's so many cool things. Like, it's... Super exciting. Why can't you tell us? Because it's super duper top secret. All right. So one of them, I can't tell you because it's an NDA. and um, That's a non-disclosure agreement, guys. And and Mark will get sued. I won't. I don't (laughs) think. How does that work? I I don't know. Let's not go there. Let's not try. So let's just leave that one. The second one I can't talk about because um, they're really nice friends and they were like, you better shut your mouth. That's what they said (laughs) before they show me anything. (laughs) Because like they're cool and like they know I'm a journalist, but they know I'm there like on holiday and they know we're friends, so they can trust me and they show me something, and then you can see them thinking like, should I show them this really secret thing? And it was always you better shut your mouth, and then they get this cool <laughs> secret thing out. And I'm like, so I can't otherwise. But eventually well. you'll be able to tell everybody. Yeah, but about. some of it's like really far in the future, like wow. two years. Two ahead. years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So there was those, and I went to see uh, Unique as well, who is a clothing company based in Andorra, and they make custom clothing that's made in Poland. Right. So uh, that's pretty cool. So, uh, and again, they have lots of really cool, interesting things coming. And again, I can't talk about that either. Right. But well, well, let's, well uh, Andy's going to talk about the, the, the latest headlines that, have, uh, that we can tell you about this week. Uh, and then later on in this episode, we're going to be joined by Chips, who's also been on holiday and has come back and has been to a trade industry bike show and he's going to tell you about everything he saw there he and saw pro- some secret stuff too and so there'll be some things he can't tell you about but uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what he what he can talk to he us saw the same secret thing did you really okay well that's this is <laughs> the whole point of a podcast is that we inform our listeners I know. Oh, I brought visuals as well. You brought visuals. <laughs> right. Well, this is where we should say that if you're one of those strange people that actually likes to also watch podcasts, we are videoing this podcast. Mm-hmm. So uh, Andy and I are now waving at the camera. Yeah. So um, so if you want to go over to YouTube, you'll be able to actually see us recording this podcast. Uh, Andy has brought some fresh goods in for us to. He's going to talk about it, mm-hmm. but we'll be able to show it to the camera. So you should check us out on YouTube too. Uh, and then later we're going to get... Joined by um, Charlie, 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 our merchandise guy, and he's got some new merch this week, and he's going to talk to you about that. And we've got a special guest this week. Uh, if you can cast your minds back to before Christmas, when that when we were running our uh, annual Mega Sack competition, yeah. the Mega Sack winner, the guy who won absolutely everything, he turned up on Friday to collect his prize, and he was gobsmacked. And we've got I imagine re- all those, all that stuff, frames, wheels. So he has so much stuff. He could fix everyone's puncture in the world for the next year. If you ride with this guy, and you'll hear him talk about the stuff he's won later, if you ride with this guy, you won't need to take any kit with you at all. No. He'll fix all your punctures for you. He'll have all the tools. But anyway, we'll talk to him about that later. So first of all, let's let's go back to some of the headlines this week. What what what's the big headline in the week? Andy? So the big headline for us uh, when it comes to like engagement and comments and everything has been the the announcement that the UCI have launched a five series cross country e MTB race series e bike racing e bike racing, but it's e cross country e bike racing. So they already have the e EWS. Uh, which I'm sure that's not the correct name. And that's ran in conjunction with a company called WES. Uh, And this is basically the cross-country version. So there's going to be five races throughout the year, cross-country racing only, 
I, I'm not sure what a cross country e bike track. Yeah, look how's like. this? How's this going to work? How how are we going to stop people entering on bikes that are more powerful than somebody else's? Well, yeah, I don't think they can because if we just look at the manufacturers, like different motors give out different amounts of torque. Obviously, the watt hour, the, the wattage is the same, two fifty peak of five hundred, but torque is it's any what you could go for anything. Yeah. So you've got so the new Levo SL has thirty five yeah. uh, pounds of torque. Then we've got um, Shimano motors with 70. And then if high bike ever bring that fly on out, that's 120 newton meters at all. Yeah, I think that the Bosch one's 75 newton meters, the new motor. Yeah, and I think Bafang have one that goes to 160. That's insane. And Bafang actually have a race team. It's uh, American Eagle. So they actually right. had a bike. It was at Eurobike last year, and they had their special motor in. So, like, how does that work? I don't know. Like, if you're on a 160 newton meter torque bike and you're fit and there's a massive steep climb, Versus someone just as fit on a lightweight thirty-five pound uh, torque motorbike. Yeah, yeah. Like, how does that work? I don't know. It's going to be really weird. Like, interesting to see how they they make it fair. Yes, that's that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Well, we're watching that very closely <coughs> as that develops, and you can read the full press release that we got from the UCI. That's on our website right now. If you go to Facebook, there are ninety-two comments and counting on that story. That's kind of insane, isn't it? It is insane yeah. because, and it's a good <laughs> mix. We've got a mix of people who are like, no, this is like, no. And then we've got people who are really into it. They think it's great. And yeah, I mean, I love the fact that there's more racing because there's going to be more innovation and we'll see cooler bikes. Mm. Uh, but I really don't know how it's going to work as a yeah. series. There's I mean, no the, the, nothing like an e-bike story to get people talking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Right. What else has happened this week? Uh, Tani's um, in the news again. Yep. What's she done? She has basically, I don't know if it's a whole season, but she's ruined the beginning of a, a season. I mean, obviously it was an accident. Dirt jumping, playing around on the new Canyon bikes, and she's dislocated her ankle. Ooh. I know, like I don't, even, I didn't know that was possible. I mean, like, I mean, it feels pretty solid down there. Like, yeah. how would you do it? I mean, oh, yeah, she did it. Well, she proved you can. Well, do she it. she did more than just dislocate it, didn't she? She, she dislocated it and she broke a tib and fib. I think it was right. So, so it's a major, major uh, accident. Yeah, so, we've got the new story on our website, which includes the images from her social media feed. I had all credit to her. Mm -hmm. She 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 managed to get it videoed, and she managed to get some video of her ankle being put back in place. It, yeah, I mean that must absolutely hurt. Oh. And it's 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 a real shame because she's on a new team. She's just signed for Canyon, all new sponsors. So everyone's super hyped for this new season of racing, and now she's out. I mean, at least for the beginning, I can't imagine she's going to be up to full speed for the whole year, even if she does get back into it. Yeah, I was reading that you know fractures generally <laughs> six weeks, but. It, She's torn ligaments, yep. and apparently that can take typically three months. That's a hell yeah. of a yeah. delay. And the season begins in a month. Yep. So, but it's going to be still going to be an interesting season. Valley Hall is now an elite yep. rider. We've got Miriam Nicole, who seems to be back up to speed. Nina Hoffman's new team. So there's still some, and Tracy Hanna, of course. Yep. So we've got some great riders there. So it's still going to be an interesting season. Yep. I reckon Valley Hall's going to win. Right. There you go. You heard it here first. Yeah. If you're, if you're into betting, go for that. Um, I've got down, written in my notes here, Forest Style Tees story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can talk about something. They started to tease their back. Last year, I went out and I um, I rode with Cedric. And this is none of this is secret. You can read it online and, and you know, it's we're not going to get sued for this. Don't worry about it. So they, <laughs> they had two bikes. They had like a, a regular bike. What are we calling these now? Regular bikes, no motorbikes. I I don't know. What I was the name? Naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated. I think we can give the credit to that one to our man Will over in Australia. So we got naturally aspirated, acoustic, Where normal, normal, um, muscle bike. Muscle. Oh yeah, that's. That, yeah, I'm not into I'm that. Not really I think apparently there's a whole bunch of. Um, I think in Germany they like to call them muscle muscular bikes. Yeah, Spanish too. Spanish that's. Like that. Doesn't sound right to me. So no, the, you still have to use your muscles. Yeah. On bike. The debate goes on. What are we going to call them? Anyway, so that yeah, Forest Star had this um, bike with no motor on, and that was their. They would, I think that's the one you see Cedric riding. I don't know if that's going to go into production or not, mm -hmm. but they had that bike, and that's the one I rode basically. And they also had an e-bike as well, which I couldn't ride much except around a car park. What was I talking about? We're talking about the uh, oh, yeah, Forest Hill teasing. Oh, yeah. So that was last year. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, totally. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was last year. And now, um, obviously, this year, they're gearing up because they're going to release the bike uh, very soon. And they're starting to tease it. So they've started to show off a few details of the bike. And yeah, so part, the, so part of it, 
one of them was a, a teaser of something low down in the frame towards yeah. where we expect the motor will be. And it looks like a power charging port or something, or even a little toolbox, I don't know. Uh, another teaser was just where the shock goes through the frame. And But the, the one that looks really cool is the control for mm -hmm. the motor. And that, if, if that's one of the pictures that they posted on their Instagram. And it looks like, well, it's not like anything else out there because unlike um, you know other brands like Canyon, they're not buying in components and just putting them on their frame. They're developing everything. So that controller is their design. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of like a ring with two thumb spaces on it. I think it's got five LED lights on there. I don't know if that's showing power or what. But it, it looks like a really neat mm -hmm. little solution. Very, very tidy looking thing. And you could definitely use it with an underbar dropper post remote, which is really important, I think. Excellent. Yeah. So. <coughs> <coughs> do, you, do you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast? I've not listened he to He has a Jamie. So we need a Jamie. And a Jamie, I don't know if, because I've never watched the video, Jamie sits off in the corner, I, I think. Yeah. And you can ask, you can say, hey, Jamie, bring up a picture of that. And you'll show us a picture we could have looked at what we were talking uh, about then right yeah we could so have. we need a jamie we do we need a jamie right okay we'll we'll look to recruit somebody right next i want to talk about somebody who's not here mm -hmm. he's on holiday right now our very own ross domain we've got um a whiteboard in the office haven't we yeah we have yeah and yeah. Uh, we've got a tally chart going on, on on there at the moment would you like to explain what it is so uh ross is infamous now for yeah. for two things one of them is changing his bike. He's like a serial bike swapper. He's con I don't know how many bikes has he been through since he's been. I've seriously track. lost count. It's yeah, I think oh, I don't know. Anyway, he's on he's on another one, maybe the one hundredth bike since he's been here. Yeah. But so yeah, we've got a tally chart of how many bikes he'll change through the year and also how many wheels he'll smash because <laughs> he, like anyone who makes a wheel and they say this is indestructible, we give it to Ross. And he'll go, I'm just going to go for a spin. And he'll come back and the wheel will be in half. It will. It's it's a guaranteed it's a guaranteed thing. It is. Mm -hmm. So we, we're, we're keeping a tally of not only the number of bikes that he's owning yeah. through the year, uh, but also how many wheels he, uh, as we like to call it, how many wheels he spanks. Mm -hmm. So we've got a regular feature for you now. So we're going to go over to the, uh, the Ross Domain spank desk with Ross Domain. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Ross Domain Spank Desk with Ross Domain. This week I have mostly spanked no wheels. That was the Ross Domain Spank Desk with Ross Domain. So there you go. Um, we'll, we, we'll, we'll be back next week and we'll see how that telly chart stands next week. It's a bit cruel, isn't it? Because we're, we're, we're giving him a hard time right now and he's on holiday. Can't defend it's himself. It's not cruel at all. No? No, 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 no. This is fine. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah. Well, we'll get him on next week and he, he can explain himself. We'll hear some first-hand domain spank. Absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what else have you got for us this week? Let's go. Let's, this is a Fresh Goods Friday podcast, mm -hmm. which is all about products and stuff. What have you brought into the studio so today? I've only brought in muck-off clothing because I didn't want to bring the tires in because I, I thought, hang on a sec, I can describe clothing quite well on audio. I didn't realize it was a recording. And I thought a tire might be a bit boring to listen to. Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> you can hear the, yeah. the clothing. But anyway, this is Muckoff's new um, clothing range. So like, See, Muckoff are really expanding their range now. So as you know, back in the day, Muckoff was x light, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And uh, basically what they did was they took, oh, I was going to say what it was, a cleaner. Yeah. And they, <laughs> and they branded it as a Muckoff. And then they became a whole new company. So x lights yeah. kind of disappeared, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Even though yeah. they had, didn't they have a downhill bike at one time? I think they might well have done. They had they had yeah. loads of stuff like so big for riser bars and and uh, uh, bar ends. They were huge. Oh yeah, the bar ends. I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, purple anodized everything. So now yeah. that's gone, and, and Muckoff has taken over as a brand. And obviously they do the cleaner, and they've expanded into other things. They do the sealant. They do um, tubeless kits, valves. Um, you can get a special coating for your chain, can't mm. you? <laughs> Muckoff do special coatings to make your chain. Do they still do that? I, I, I have no idea. It was a nano coating. It was a nano coating. Yeah. And was it expensive? Like £95? Or something? It was It was a lot. You could either buy one of their pre-coated chains or you could send in your own and they would treat it mm -hmm. with nanos. <laughs> nano particles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> super slippies they were. Super slippy. Yeah. Yes. Um, that was just like to make you super efficient. 
Yeah. That was before e-bikes came out. That's right. But originally, if you wanted e-bike power, you had a nano-coated X, X Lightning muck off chain <laughs> yes. and you could go as fast as and but yeah they're expanding they're doing loads of things so they've gone into uh they've got new bags yep which i've been using one of those bags it's actually a really lovely bag yeah and uh, they've sent out so you've got there you've got a pair of shorts yeah i've got a pair of shorts with me and these are their tech shorts and they're well it says they're waterproof but there's some interesting design choices on here yeah so they're a waterproof breathable material and one thing that knockoff is doing, if I can find it, they're doing this like Velcro patch thing. Now that's weird. That's a Velcro patch is at the bottom of uh, <clears throat> the, the leg. Yeah. Um, why would you have a Velcro patch at the bottom of the round, basically just over your knee? Right. So I am, I, uh, from what I can tell, it's just branding. So what, seriously, yeah, can I feel that? No, that's, no, no. I mean that that on its own let me is. Hear that? That's actually yeah. That's 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 the soft side of Velcro, isn't it? Not the spiky side. No, yeah. Otherwise, it would just grab everything, wouldn't it? Yeah. So if you have one of their um, one of the muck off bags, it comes with like the same size Velcro patch, yeah. and it has like a little patch that you Velcro on. Right. And I don't know if you can get optional ones or whatever, but you could take it off your bag and you could put it there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Maybe someone in. In the know, at Muckoff could tell us what this Velcro patch no, is actually it is, for. It is for that. Yeah, it's for That's, that. It's, so you could take just a simple. You can move a patch around. You I, can move. I, a I patch. assume there are optional ones, or you can make your own patch, or you could play that game where you've got Velcro gloves and you throw balls at each other and you grip. You could get it with yeah. your, your your pants now. But there you go. <laughs> but it's different, isn't it? No other brand is doing that. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I can understand why they probably aren't doing that. But yes. All right. So these waterproof trousers, they've got a Velcro patch on one side. And they've got a foam pocket on the other. Ah, yes. Um, it feels like it's kind of made of like a microfibery material. It's a nice soft yeah, foam with well, a button. Well, it's soft on the outside. Pressed under the top, stop your foam bouncing out. Yeah, for sure. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that feels because it's, it's in a bit of a funny location, but we'll yeah. see. It's like, like on the front of your thigh. Yeah, but the pockets look mint. They've got really nice waterproof zips oh, there, yeah. so you can put Fully things in Fully sealed there. zips. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, reflective panels, so you can ride at night and people can see your muck-off flashing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, tape seams, and they've got an elastic panel at the back. Um, that is very stretchy. Yeah, it's extremely stretchy. And one of the things I'm interested about is these shorts say that they're waterproof and they're taped, as you can see. Yep, so the tape on the inside. But 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 you can see you can me that's weird. That. I can so, see your face through that back stretchy panel. bit. So I'm wondering if, if have they done some magic and is that waterproof? Yes. So we'll see. And also, if, if you use this piece, yeah, this is also a feature that's off. So we're looking at the back. Yeah, I'm doing a that's, good job here. Yeah, low, piece, low of, for all of you listening, this piece here. <laughs> <laughs> so on the back, right. Uh, where if you had a tramp stamp would be. Oh, right. yeah. yes, I think that... Is that, that okay? That, Can you yeah, say I think that? that defines it for everybody. I don't think anyone's going to have a problem <laughs> working where that is. So um, it's like some uh, loops made of almost like seatbelt material. Yeah. And it's like if you get a seatbelt and you chop it down the middle. So what's it for? That is for ho hooking things on. Hooking things? Yeah, so on the bag, uh, you so the bag is a system. You have a main bag yeah. and then you have a mini bag. Like the mini bag that they sent to me was like a shaving bag. Like, you know, All right, yeah. Uh, and that hooks on and clips into place. So you, what you're saying is that you can go for a ride and you can take your shaving kit with you? Yeah, well, I, I, they'll have other small packs. They, they do have a small one, but they didn't have any left. So. Excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm being rather cynical about this. I'm well, trying to work out what it's... <laughs> do you remember, um, oh, what was that? Centurions, the cartoon? Yeah. When no, no. <laughs> yes, you do. And it was like, they had like uh, these cool suits and they had like things that you could clip on and they could convert themselves into different underwater I've or got spaceship. no idea what you're talking about now. <laughs> Centurions was cool. Anyway, but this is like what Centurions was. So you've got your pants, yeah? Yeah. And now you don't want to take a bum pack with you or a fanny pack, depending yeah. where you live. Okay. So you have a little pack that clips onto there. Right. right. Okay. So it's like you can have a bag at the back, but you don't have the strap you don't going have the strap. Way. So yeah. It just clips onto the just back of your shorts. And you can have your H2O in there. H2O? Yeah, that's right. H2O. Yeah. H2O. Water. No, CO2. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was wrong when I said it. You can have your CO2 in there. You can have uh, like and some tools and things that just clipped onto the back right. yep. instead of having an extra bum bag. Is I that think that's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting. I can to see, see how that it works. That, that sort of hang down low at the back and reveal. No, my, it's like, like they're, they're my about plumber's bum. Like maybe imagine your phone. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry, pressing button. Oh sorry. Uh, imagine your phone size bag clipped on there. That yeah. would be all right. 
Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. work. I think that's a cool idea. So there we've got that, these shorts. So we're going to test those. Yep. Perfect weather for testing waterproof pants. And I'm going to rustle now. Is anybody out there? Is it dry where you are? Because it certainly isn't here. They've also sent over. Plastic bag rustling. Oh, yeah, what's this? This, this is... is the jacket. And this actually oh, looks really, really good. Muck off jacket. Muck off jacket. Again, too. it's got all, this, all the taped up seams by the looks of it. Yeah, it's fully taped. It's got some really nice looking waterproof zips on here too. So the main zip is stormproof. You've got the you know the plastic yep. flaps over the top. Every single pocket on here has that same waterproof kind of zip. So you've got like a, a chest pocket here, yep. which might be good for your mobile phone again, um, or if you want to carry yeah. your money in there. Once upon a time, those chest pockets were for maps. A what? A map. A map. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> and then you've got some larger pockets, uh, you know, for carrying stuff, yeah. more maps. More maps, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, it looks like a really nice jacket there. I like the look of that. Fully it's, taped, feels yeah. like it's pretty lightweight, and it's got a press stud, press stud fitted. So that's a removable hood. Yeah. All right. So if you, uh, if you like your hoods, then you've got one. And if you don't, then you don't. Well, or <laughs> if you're riding along. Because like this, some jackets the the hood doesn't pack away, does it? No. Yeah. So you'll be riding along and you'll go under a branch and then the hood will get caught by the branch and you get uh, pulled off. Yeah. You get what? Yes, you'll get pulled off. <laughs> pulled off in the woods. That's why we ride, no? <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely going to pull that out. And play that at the beginning of this podcast. So uh, I mean, yeah, that will prevent uh, you. That, that means your hood will pop off instead of you popping off. There you go. <laughs> Right. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Andy. No yeah. Right. So now let's uh, let's bring chips in. We'll have a chat with chips. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Pulled off in the woods. <laughs> So, okay, seamlessly, seamlessly linked through now. We're now joined by Chips. Hello, Chips. As if I was never away. Yes, he's here now. Uh, you've uh, just returned one from holiday. Hooray. Uh, where did you go on holiday? I went to Spain, went to uh, the Costa Blanca, sort of Alicante end of the world, which is where Mondrak is based, huh? coincidentally. Um, and uh, I was there for uh, road riding. Road riding. Sorry, Most, guys. <laughs> mostly because if I go on a mountain bike holiday, I end up writing about it for the magazine. So uh, if I go on a road ride, road riding holiday, no one actually ever wants to hear about it. So that's that's my secret. It's kind of like why I like to go snowboarding on yeah, holidays. Yeah, very, very similar thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, by coincidence, or by not entirely coincidence, the Costa Blanca bike race was on the the weekend I was there, and that's the. It's like a UCI three or four day stage race, yeah. like proper Spanish style cross country racing um, race, which was was pretty good because the hotel I was staying at was the base for that um, event. And so, in the breakfast queue in the morning for your for your fried egg would be, you know, Carlos Coloma, who uh, an Olympic racer, or uh, Dan McConnell, a New Zealand uh, Olympian. So yeah, it was it was pretty good, you know. A lot of lycra, perchance? There was a lot of spandex. There were. Yeah. Um, I did also bump into the boys from Sixth Element. Oh, yeah. Who were over there uh, racing just for fun. Yeah. Um, and I think doing a bit of secret product development. So that was uh, that was quite fun. Yeah. Just got to see some bits and pieces. Okay. The camera's just turned off there, but that's fine. We've got others. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so uh, two weeks of... Riding bikes and drinking in the sunshine, and then come back to uh, six AM flood warnings, sirens, Indeed. and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of wet out there, isn't it? It is a bit, and uh, and I guess it's not over yet. No. Uh, fortunately, the office, ironically, is right next to the canal, mm. but it does mean that we're also right next to a canal lock. So if the canal uh, starts filling up, then all the water gushes over the top of the lock gate and heads towards Hebden Bridge. We've been very lucky. We've been lit over the years. Yes. But, uh, we've never actually flooded in the office, but those around us have, unfortunately. So anyway, you came back from your holiday. I and did. And then almost immediately you jetted off down south. Jetted. To, jetted off to Milton Keynes. Yes. And uh, you went to something called Ice Bike. Yes. Uh, what is Ice Bike? Ice Bike is Madison's house show. So Madison is a very big distributor of... Lots of things from, uh, they're obviously the Shimano importers, but they also 
have their own brands like Genesis and Saracen and Ridgeback, and they import a load of other uh, components that uh, they were all on display for all their dealers. It was a, a trade show, so uh, they were there to show all their dealers the new stuff for, for this year, mostly current stuff. Uh, there were a few bits and pieces of secret things that were hidden out in the back. And there were a couple There's been of... a lot of secrets. Andy before was he was telling us literally nothing about all the things that he's he saw when he was on holiday. Is it kind of it, it, is it something to do with this time of year that uh... it, it is this time of year because uh, if you want a product that you're going to launch in say the autumn, then really it has to be nearly ready by now so that. Uh, it can be built onto bikes in May, mm. for example. So the bikes that are on sale in September, will, will they'll be starting to build them in May with all the new components. And then they get built, they get boxed up, and then they get uh, get put in a container and they spend a month being shipped around the world. Mm. So you have, to, you have this sort of date of launching, but you have to go all the way back to, you know, before, the, before you launch the bikes, you need a brochure that's got, photographs in of the bike. Mm. So you need the bikes before you have the brochure and then you need the components to get the bikes together and, uh, and everything. While you, while the uh, original equipment manufacturers will be making a few products available for product managers and go, here's our new fork or here's our new gear system or whatever, uh, that's one or two yeah. for people to try. They're not, uh, there aren't enough that yeah. you can put them on your, production bikes and get them photographed and things. Well, you know, readers often, uh, we've, we've had this feedback before, people sometimes question, we as journalists, we learn about these things and then we keep them secret. Isn't it our job to actually tell people out there what we've seen? Um, it depends. I mean, how how far in advance do you need to know about a product that you're not going to be able to buy until Christmas? Mm. Uh, you know, if, if I tell you in November you might be excited about it and it comes out in December. If yeah. I tell you in February, you'll have forgotten about it. And so when it comes out, you're like, oh, yeah. There's, there's... I guess there's another way of thinking about it. Why would uh, brands like Shimano be uh, upset if we did actually reveal these, this information? A lot of the time because they're still selling this year's products. Mm. Uh, the, the big selling time for mountain bikes is the summertime. Yeah. And... Everyone knows that there may be new products coming out in September or by Christmas or whatever. Um, and it depends what sort of, you know, are you going to not buy a bike now mm. if you know that there's a better one coming out? And I've, I've spoken to people who've, who've done that and they basically miss a whole summer yeah. because they're waiting for the next best thing to come out. And really, they could just be getting on riding bikes and having a great time. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, so, so there, there is there was a lot of of, uh, of current products, and then there was um, there were a few secret bits and pieces that, that I got a PowerPoint presentation from and stuff, and it was there were some videos and some songs. And, uh, <laughs> Would you like to share any of those songs? No, I'm sorry, I had no, to sign no, a disclosure gonna... thing. Uh, yes. That's another yeah. secret. Yes, yes. Oh, that one's best kept secret. I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so, it, was, it, it was good. And there, there were some things that we we, we could talk about. There were um, uh, it was the first time that a lot of people had seen the new GRX, which is the yeah. drop bar off road gear system. Not not cyclocross. It's yeah. not gravel. It's oh, it's something new. Graventure. Graventure. Um, <laughs> someone uh, profile did have a a gravel specific aero bar set up. Gravel specific aero bars. Yes. Really. The, okay. The the little uh, foamy arm armrests sort of hinge up so you can still use the tops of the bars for for riding on. Right. But then when when you get to a, a endless stretch of Welsh fire road, you can <laughs> get aero. I see. Right. So the, 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 when can we expect these things? To... Uh, as soon as you want. We're excellent. So there yes, you if you if you've been waiting. All your life <laughs> for gravel specific aero bars. Of, of more interest, perhaps there was uh, a, a few things. Uh, Tule had a none more single track world specific. Oh, you told me rear about rack this, yes. for Volkswagen T6 vans. Somebody on the forum made a, 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 an interesting point that sticking a rack on the back of a van 
Yeah, it seems like a futile thing to do. Isn't that why you have a van? Uh, possibly, but then what if your van is full of all of your hashtag van life uh, camping gear and stuff? And if you have your, uh, you know, built-in cupboards and your built-in espresso maker and your and your log stove, yeah, <laughs> uh, then then there's no room. Indeed. So so <laughs> there's a there's a rack for your uh, for your bikes. Right. Uh, anything else that we you can actually tell us about? <laughs> uh, Dynaplug showed us uh, interesting. Um, Handlebar end mounted uh, tubeless puncture repair spiky wow, things. Just new places to stick things on your bike. Well, they they'd made it so that it clips onto uh, an ODI lock on grip. So it's right. quite so it uses the outer uh, mount of the ODI grip to then have a threaded part so that your thing threads in. Yeah, which was quite a nice a, a kind of clever way of, of doing yeah. that. And they also do one for for road bikes as yeah. well. So um, that was enough of the the trade show. Stuff. Oh, fine. There's plenty more. There's loads more. <laughs> I'm sure we could you, you could read all about it online. But last Friday, yes, um, we had uh, a special guest come to the office. We did, and it was um, I, I said earlier, people can cast their minds back to before Christmas when we ran our annual mega sack draw. The winner came to see us. Yes, Rob Alstead came up from South Wales. Uh, he made a. a, a Couple of days of it came up, and stayed in our local uh, mountain bike friendly B and B, uh, and you took him for a ride. Yeah, he he came into uh, to the office to see all of the the goodies spread out on our on our giant boardroom kitchen yeah. table, uh, which did did fill the whole table. It did it was very full, and uh, yeah, and we we went out riding, took in some of the uh, of our local sort of testing loop. Yeah, got some pictures. It didn't rain until we were on the way back. It was all right. Yeah. Finished off with fish and chips, and we've got uh, a recording of uh, Rob seeing his prize for the first time. The, the great yes. unveil. Yeah. So let, let, let's let's bring that in now. So I'm hoping Mark is Mark is lurking. He is. He's look. He's lurking there. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well. Thank you. Sense of trepidation. Yeah. So uh, so. Luckily, Robert does ride bikes, so he's yes. he's hopefully going to have a use for all of this. That <laughs> yeah, he's that's about right. to get his mega sack. So, oh, come on in. Good grief! There's loads of it. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to fit in the car. <laughs> it's actually it's actually not all of it as well, because some of it um, will be delivered delivered directly to you. Oh, okay. Too. So oh, well, that's easier. Yeah. So you've got a big oh, car outside. Uh, yeah, with a roof box. <laughs> But I've got my bike in it, so I don't know how it's all going to fit. But where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, yeah, I might be I, catching the train home. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I still can't believe I won it though. That's the thing; it was just a, a real surprise. Yeah. Well, and we forgot to tell you as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. he was he was in such denial for ages. I I can't believe it. No, no, I can't. No, no. Until I get officially told, I I can't quite believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we forgot to officially tell you. Well, come and have a look oh, yeah. through all the stuff. Hi, good to be here. Coffee. Oh yes, please. Yeah, yes, black please. coffee would be lovely. Thank you. <laughs> it's, oh, it's your stuff. You're allowed tremendous. to touch it. <laughs> if I start opening boxes, I could be playing for hours. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. thinking, oh, go here, there. And I noticed as well when I watched the video, these are actually my size. Oh, they're your size. They're, they're size your forty-five. Size. I do believe. Yes. Excellent. And I thought, wow, that's just what a chance of that. What the chance of that happening? <laughs> How many years have you been doing this for? Well, a number, a number of years. I can't remember. You've been that, you've been entering the competition yeah, for, for years. years. Yes. Oh. And uh, when it came on the um, YouTube Mogcat two thousand, I thought. Well, that is my name, but I thought maybe it's a different spelling or something, and it's quite an unusual sort of like username. But I kept checking it, and checking it. It was a. So, are you going to put all this on? Is there a particular project? There is. I bought a um, Flare Max, Cosmic Flare Max frame, and uh, and fork, and most of this stuff is going to go on that bike. So I'll build it up, and it'll be a really good spare bike, I think. So, I think it'll look really good with those drop bars on. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're for, really. Isn't it? <laughs> I thought if I ride them upside down like that, it'd look really cool like it's the 70s again. <laughs> um, but there, there was an air training corps near me mm -hmm. who had some bikes stolen. They had about 10 mounted bikes stolen, so they've got a GoFundMe page. I thought, well, actually, what I can do is bits I don't use, donate to them, they can go sell on eBay, and they can uh, help build back some of their funds to replace some of their bikes. Cool. So sort of share the love, that's as it were. That's a very noble cause. That's good karma. Yeah, it is. Yeah. My cup. So the, the frame you know, potentially might not have a, a use in my my garage, but they might be able to sell it and or, or build it up themselves. You never know what they get. So, mm. 
Are bit. you going to get a bit? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Chips. That's uh, right. And uh, I think what we're going to do now, I think we've got something from Charlie about merchandise. So we're going to cut over to that and, uh, and we'll be back shortly. All right. Then. And now we're joined in the studio by our merchandise expert and guru, Charlie Hobbs. How are you doing, Charlie? Fantastic. Enjoying the northern weather. Yes. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's deep. Have you, <laughs> the weather is deep at the moment. Have you got a problem with the weather up here in the north? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hasn't stopped raining for... Well, how long well, have you been here? Yeah, well, I arrived in the summer and I had a vitamin D deficiency within a month, <laughs> and that was July. <laughs> so, so that gives you a clue as to how uh, how unsunny it is up here that's true yeah and before you came up here where were you you were, you were... i was uh, i was um i was more local to spain than i was yorkshire <laughs> da- down on the south coast of england um in the gulf stream you know nice warm water <laughs> and uh, beaches sunshine even a few palm trees and so on and uh, and so yeah i was down on the south coast i used to run a bike shop called charlie the bike monger which is now still exists on the other side of New yorkshire over in ripon Wow, it's moved. And yeah. you've come and joined us here in the wet north. Yeah, yeah. To handle all of our merchandise. Yes. And you've been doing that for six months. Yeah, gosh, yeah. yes. And in that time, what's your, what's your proudest achievement as Single Tracks merchandise manager? Um, upsetting a legend, I think. It was, um, Tell us more. So we um, um, there's a wonderful product called the uh, Wisecracker. So this is um, made in a little CNC machine in a guy's garage in, I think, California. And it's a headset spacer, so it sits on your bike here, and the stem goes there, and it opens beer. For those not watching the YouTube video, Charlie's got one of these in his hand. And uh, how would you t- describe what it is? A headset spacer with a bottle opener sticking out from it. Yeah, made out of one piece of aluminium in a bloke's garage. That's brilliant. And uh, so this allows you to, means you've always got a bottle opener on your bike. <laughs> Um, it's um, so it is really practical and useful. However, some people didn't really kind of grasp the practicality of this, and um, we had more people complaining about it, about the <laughs> price of it. It's about seventeen ninety nine, and uh, one of those was um, MTB legend Joe Murray. Indeed. So Joe Murray, I first surely he was flattering about it. No, he wasn't. <laughs> no. What he did said, he say? I'm sorry, Chips. That's the dumbest thing. <laughs> I've ever seen on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, we, well, he's, he's Joe Murray. So yeah. uh, Joe Murray goes all the way back to the days of Kona and possibly before. He worked on the his leading link fork with little rubber bumpers That's called right. a Track 2. Yes. Um, the Impact headset, which was a bit like an A headset, but worked on threaded forks, which were standard, um, and the sloping top tube, Christ. which has caught on. That one yeah. really has caught on. And uh, he's also a racer. He came over to the UK for man versus horse versus bike and probably won it. And I think he was American national champion at some point. Indeed. And so he, he said, it's dumb. It's just plain dumb. And since you said that, um, we, how have sales been? Really good. Yeah. Because um, we, we <laughs> screenshotted his, uh, his comment and stuck it in the description and said, don't take our word for it. Let's <laughs> ask MTB design pioneer Joe Murray what he thinks. It's dumb. This is the uh, antithesis of everything we learn from mar- about marketing, isn't it? Yes. yes. Take the bad reviews and stick them out there. Yep. No such thing as ba- uh, yep. something about bad publicity. Yeah. I, I, on, on a similar note, I remember a long time ago in the distant past when I used to work before single track. There was a time before single track, and uh, I was a, a freelance tester for MBUK magazine, and I Ooh. remember doing a group test on tools, and I got from one nameless UK distributor. I got a tool that literally cost about four ninety nine, and I think my review was it's basically made of cheese. Yeah, and I got a call a few weeks after publication by uh, the sales manager at the distributor who rang to thank me for the review because they've now <laughs> sold out completely. So, so it, you, it works. So you buy them for people you don't like, knowing that when they come to fix their bike and of nowhere they don't fix their bike, they die. I can't claim to the understand the psychology that goes on with the kind of negative reviews and sales. But yeah. anyway, we've sold quite a few of those. Good. What else have we got? Because you have been responsible for bringing in quite a bit of new merchandise to the single track uh, So um, the latest thing 
I shall hold us up for the camera, yep. is um, this is uh, this is brand new. This is a whole new standard of um, it's called a four two six. So remember when we had twenty six yes. inch and Charles holding up a mug. Um, we've got the four two six mug, which uh, adds fifty percent to your standard capacity of your standard mug. Now those. Those mugs, those yeah. old mugs, we're now recalling uh, Betamax or Beta Mug is yep. now the industry standard. Beta Mug. Yeah. Beta Mug, because we, um, we have improved upon it by 50%. So why would you want a mug that's 50% bigger? It's obvious. It's, it's 50% bigger. That makes it better, yeah, doesn't it? Bigger is always better. Yes. And so um, like 29 inch wheels, this is going to be bigger. Um, it carries 50% more beer. Um, to, oh, well, you can make put beer in it. Well, um, we've put more than just beer in it recently. <laughs> yeah, haven't we? It's been thoroughly tested. We'll get yeah. to that in a second. So you can put 50% more caffeine in there, or you can put 50% more tea. Now, if you're putting tea in there, that will necessitate a 50% increase in biscuits. Of course. So sometimes these new standards take a little while to catch on and the industry to sort of step in, back them up. And I remember when I was selling 29-inch bikes, we had a choice of um, two frames, both imported, both American companies, uh, one rim, and I think one tire at one point at the very <laughs> beginning. And that has obviously changed. So with the um, 426er mug standard, mm. um, we were really pleased to discover that uh, McVitie's and their Jaffa Cakes had, are producing a triple pack. Now that's 50% bigger than the double pack, which you would have used with your old beta mugs. Indeed. And then there's one intriguing thing, it was the um, British Cycling, uh, no, so Brit, uh, Team GB logo is on the packet. So McVitie's are getting behind 426 of the new industry mug standard. And maybe the British cycling team and, and Team GB, maybe they are going to be adopting the bigger mug standard and maybe they're going to go and win medals because of this. Fantastic. Your logic is, is, is you can't argue yeah. with that logic. Yeah. That is. So this is the new standard of mugs. New standard of mugs. Yeah. I like the handle. You can get four yeah. fingers in there. You, you can get, I take an XXL glove. I can get four <laughs> fingers straight in there. <laughs> You've got to check the video out. <laughs> just, just, just like that. <laughs> just and like uh, you know, that is secure. I reckon I could probably go, uh, I don't know, bouldering yeah. with a mug of tea you and can... not spill much. Right. Okay. okay. That is um, that's a very sturdy, we're, stable mug. I feel we're pushing things a little now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is it a downhill mug? Is it? Is <laughs> <laughs> so you get one of these. You go to our online shop. You can buy one of these along with everything else. If you are a registered member of the website, you uh, yep. sign in and give yourself a username. Uh, that gets you a discount. Yep. And how do you get even more off? Um, by being a subscriber. It's fantastic, isn't so, it? So um, uh, 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 about a quid drops off, and uh, another quid or so drops yeah. off again. Uh, and but nice thing being a subscriber, there's also free postage. There we go. So the cost of posting is, out is. is exactly three pounds. Uh, you don't pay that either. Single track subscription, 39 pounds a year, and it's like half the cost of an Amazon Prime subscription. Yeah. And your uh, back issues of the magazine make excellent speaker stands. Is this something you found? <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is currently functioning very well. I lost my speaker stands in the move north, and uh, a stack of single tracks does exactly the same. Job. I can imagine that working. Right, well, we're going to bring this to an end now. Uh, that's the end of this week's episode. Head over to our website, check out all the merch we've got in the shop, check out all the stories that you've heard, and join us the same time next week, and we'll have more stuff, I should imagine. We'll see what happens in the next seven days. All right, that's all from us. We're going to go and get out of this studio, which is freezing, <laughs> and get back to our office, which is much, much warmer. All right, yes. cheers, guys. Bye.